Okay, so a couple of weeks ago, Quebec passed Bill 62, a law which bans people from wearing face coverings while receiving or performing public services. Although the bill doesn't mention any religious groups or garments in particular, it's been criticized for singling out Muslim women who wear the niqab or burqa. A burqa is a full body covering with mesh over the eyes, while a niqab is a full body covering with a slit for the eyes. So a Muslim woman wearing either one could be asked to remove their garment while attending a public university, library, doctor's appointment, or even while taking the bus. Quebec's Justice Minister Stephanie Valle says that people wearing things like large scarves, sunglasses, or bandanas will also be affected by the law. They say that the bill is for communications, identity, and safety purposes. And exactly how the Quebec government will punish those who violate the law remains unclear. By June 2018, the Quebec government says that they will have plans on how people can get religious exemptions from this law. About a week after the bill was passed, Valle softened parts of it in response to all of the public outrage. She said that, quote, unveiling would be restricted to the point of interaction with a public servant. So a woman who has a bus pass with photo ID would have to remove her veil as she gets on the bus, but she can put her veil back on for the rest of the ride. The previous week, Valle said that the woman would have to unveil for the entire bus ride. Another example would be a woman going to the public library. She would have to unveil as she signs out her books as she deals with the librarian, but she can put her veil back on while she's browsing for more books. Well, it seems like the majority of Canadians are calling BS on this. I mean, social media lit up with outrage about the bill. Civil rights advocates like the Canadian Council of Muslim Women say that the law violates the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Public transit workers say that they don't want the responsibility of having to refuse people's service. Right away, protests took place in Montreal bus stops and subway stations, with people wearing scarves and masks to show their solidarity with Muslim women. The Union of Quebec Municipalities called the bill inapplicable. Several municipal leaders in Quebec have already denounced it, including former Montreal Mayor Denis Coderre. Opposition parties to the Liberals in Quebec are also not buying the face covering ban because they think that it is not strong enough. They believe that all religious symbols should be banned, including the crucifix from the National Assembly. In a piece for the Canadian press, Morgan Lowry spoke to Warden Naili, who wears a niqab. She said that the law will make women less independent. Naili said that, quote, I want to control who I give the permission to access my body. I think every woman and every person should have this right. End quote. Ontario Premier Kathleen Wynne said, quote, This is the kind of actions that drives wedges in communities. End quote. And Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said that, quote, I don't think it should be the government's business to tell a woman what she should or shouldn't be wearing. I will always stand up for the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. End quote. So what are other people saying about this? There are people who support Bill 62. An Ipsos poll found that 68% of 1,001 Canadians asked would like legislation like Bill 62 passed in their own provinces. An online poll by Angus Reid Institute in September found that 6 out of 10 Quebecers quote, strongly support this bill. While Anglophones and people under the age of 35 weren't buying it, the law was supported across all other age groups. Okay, so older people with very conservative beliefs. Yeah, it seems like the type of people who support this kind of thing. But there are people in the Muslim community who support it as well, which I think shows just how complex this issue is. Tariq Fatah wrote a piece which focuses on two Muslim women who support Bill 62. One of them is Quebec professor Roxana Nazneen, who is originally from Bangladesh. She said that, quote, the niqab or burqa should have no place in a civil society. It is neither religious nor cultural. It is an anti-West political statement introduced by the radical Islamists all over the globe. End quote. Fatah also spoke to Ensaf Haidar, the wife of Saudi blogger Raif Badawi, who is serving a 10-year prison sentence and is facing 1,000 lashes for his criticism of the Saudi regime. She now lives with her daughters in Quebec. She said that, quote, I felt all of Canada had finally recognized the tyranny that is the niqab and burqa and would follow Quebec's courage in standing up to oppression of women. But listening to Anglophone men and women attack Quebec's new law shocked me." End quote. 
So why is this happening in Quebec and not anywhere else in Canada? Well, preserving Quebec's unique culture has always been one of the priorities for the province. It sees itself as a minority, while the rest of Canada is the English-speaking or Anglophone majority. Margaret Wente wrote in a recent piece for the Globe and Mail, If the doctrine in the rest of Canada is diversity, the doctrine of Quebec is maintaining its distinct culture at all costs. I think that's an accurate observation. The separation of church and state is also one of the biggies in Quebec culture. For a long time, Quebec was a Catholic province, and the church had a lot of control in the government. Conservative policies reached their peak during Premier Maurice de Plessis' administration, which was called the Great Darkness. Then, in the 1960s, a guy called Jean Lesage was elected as premier, and under his government, Quebec went through the Quiet Revolution. Welfare was created, anti-union policies were dumped, the voting age was lowered from 21 to 18, and hospitals were taken out of church control, among other things. So this is really simplifying it, but these two factors, preserving Quebec's unique culture and religious neutrality, in my opinion, have made way for more extreme forms of nationalism in the province. I mean, Bill 62 isn't the first of its kind. Back in 2007, there was a debate over whether a YMCA in Montreal should frost its gym windows to accommodate a Hasidic synagogue nearby, or whether public daycares should start serving halal meals. Then, things quickly escalated when the town of Heruvi released a code of conduct for their non-existent immigrant residents, which included things like a brief on the significance of Christmas trees, and warning against burning and stoning women. Yeah, I know. What's even more ridiculous is that other towns nearby began to write up their own codes of conduct. And this gained worldwide publicity. Basically, everyone was like, what is wrong with you guys? And the town became a poster child for cultural intolerance. So in response to this, the Bouchard-Taylor report was created by these very smart guys. Gerard Bouchard and Charles Taylor. It was basically a list of recommendations on how Quebec can um, better protect the rights of minorities while still preserving their unique culture. But it had some iffy suggestions in it as well, like, quote, public servants who exercise the power of the state, such as police, judges, and prison guards, should be forbidden from wearing religious garb. It did not, however, extend the same recommendation to public service employees such as teachers or daycare workers, or to those who are receiving their services. Then in 2013, Quebec's Charter of Values, or Bill 60, was introduced, and it was basically seen as the province's answer to the Bouchard-Taylor report. It prohibited public sector workers from wearing headgear, clothing, jewelry, or other adornments that, quote, overtly indicate a religious affiliation. You might remember this poster that showed kippahs, large crucifixes, and turbans as banned items. Anyway, people thought that the bill set a double standard and that it was hypocritical because things like observing Christmas and the large crucifix display in the Quebec National Assembly were exempt because they, quote, reflected the province's cultural heritage. So that bill was eventually shut down. So Bill 62, the face covering ban today, is seen as another response to the Bouchard-Taylor report. But even the writers of the report don't agree with it as well. Earlier this year, after the Quebec City mosque shooting, Taylor also said that his report's recommendation was no longer necessary to promote harmony between Quebec's majority and minority populations. He said that government should no longer legislate which religious symbols people can wear. Taylor told the CBC that, quote, excluding more people in different ways, that's just going to make the problem worse, end quote. Basically, he said that his suggestions had a negative effect and that it made people who have extremely right-wing beliefs braver in voicing opinions and that it created more suspicion towards minorities. This story is obviously still developing and exactly how Bill 62 will affect Quebec remains unclear. But whether the bill dies or not, I think that the struggle between preserving unique Quebecois culture 
while protecting minorities will go on and on for years to come. For me, what the burqa symbolizes is not what's at question here. It's about what Quebec and in turn what Canada stands for. I mean, there's this really great quote by Premier Kathleen Wynne where she said, Sometimes life in a diverse society is uncomfortable, and that is exactly when it is even more important that we work to understand each other. Religious freedom is part of our identity. Personally, as a Christian woman, one of the ways in which I stay true to my faith is through my clothing. So for example, I wear loose-fitting shirts or long swim trunks when I go to the beach or to public swimming pools. And I'm so thankful to live in a place where I can do that. I mean, the most I get are weird looks from people, right? The thing is, in a society, people should be able to wear as much or as little clothing as they please for whatever reason they choose. Government has no place in our wardrobe. But hey, what do I know, right? So how are people around you reacting to this face covering ban? Do you think that there could be a point of compromise or middle ground, especially in terms of what the Quebec government is saying about identity and security when it comes to face coverings? Let me know, and uh, thanks for watching.